Welcome to our advanced water system breakdown video. It has taken us a really long time to sort out all of the specs and the features that we knew we wanted for our off-grid tiny home water system setup. Some of those features include a three option input and supply setup and a three option hot water process. And when I say three options, that means we have three different ways to get water into the van and we have three different ways to heat up the water that's already inside. Every tank was customized and every detail was a headache. Worth it? I don't know because we haven't even been able to use it yet. For today's video, we're gonna break it down into four separate sections. This is a much more advanced system than we've ever had before. And we know that if we're able to do this, you can definitely do this. Timestamps will be included in the description too, so you can pop on over to the section you wanna learn more about. Let's go. We knew we wanted to have two underslung tanks. So our fresh water and our gray water are mounted underneath our van. A lot of people will avoid putting their fresh water under the van because of the fear of freezing. So our workaround was to install in both tanks a small heating element. This does not heat up the water to be warm for your shower. Instead, this just will keep it a few degrees warmer than freezing. I'm surprised that these are commercially produced vehicles and there is no really good solution for all of them. So we decided to make these custom shaped so it does nothing to our clearance. It kind of fits up there like a jigsaw piece. Can you see our water tank? Where'd it go? <laughs> Other aspects of the tank that we haven't had before are sensors. The first is the temperature sensor. So the moment that temperature sensor, the moment the temperature, so the moment that the temperature sensor sees the water is starting to get too cold, it will automatically turn on the heating element. Look, just to remind you bits and pieces that we have the sensor, we have the heating element and we have the release valve right here. Then we have, look, well, the, low, the lowest point so we can be sucking the last little bit of water in there. Then we have this just as an attachment for the hose. So it stays actually there. It doesn't go over bump and ends up being there. So we know this is gonna stay there even after we bought it. Another one of the sensors we installed are for levels. This is something that we've missed in every vehicle that we've lived in so far. And that's just to have an understanding of how much water you have. And you say, okay, in the next few days, we're gonna need to fill up some water. Let's start plotting our route or planning out if we wanna visit a campsite to fill up. It gives you a better idea of what your week can look like. We want to have the gray water in between axles, between the front and the rear wheels, because that's where we have the sink and that's where we have showers. So super easy uh, pipe. And then I took the spare wheel out and we're gonna mount the fresh water behind the rear axle. One thing that is cool about both these tanks too is that they have a release. So they can both be empty and winterized or when you are going out on a really long drive, we decided that we didn't wanna have to be lugging 150 kilos of water. We would just burn more diesel than anything else. The gray water release is on an electric ball valve and the switch for that is mounted at our dashboard. And one of the coolest parts about that too is that with that electric Electric ball valve we also put a nearby camera and a light so that when we are deciding to dump our gray water from the cab we're able to see exactly if we're over the canal using the light press the button whoosh. every component used for the tanks themselves is included in our parts list This is our filtration system. We have it exposed so we can see what's going on at all times and be able to switch out filters at different stages if we see that one's getting really dirty or torn or damaged or leaking. It starts with 20 micron, then it goes down to five and then to one. We are not filtering all of our water, so we're not gonna be drinking the water that comes out of the regular tap or the water that comes out of the shower. Instead, we'll just have a small 
drinkable water spout on top of the sink. We've also considered if we should install another UV filter. If you have experience with UV filters, decided to not use one or to use one, please tell us about that experience in the comment section. We are still sort of undecided on how we want to approach that. When it comes to the health of the tanks themselves, like if they are ever going to be cleaned out, we didn't make any large hatches to be able to like enter into the tank and like wipe it down. I know that's really important to some people. We've usually used chlorine tablets or treatments that are designed to help clean out the muck that can go in the tank. You throw in a tablet or you throw in a certain amount, you drive around, it squashes around, it cleans, and then you're able to dump it. This is how we did it when I was overlanding in Africa and that is the same approach that we're gonna be doing here. If you are a regular viewer of this channel, you may notice behind me, there are a fair amount of updates that you haven't seen yet. Don't worry, we will be including that in all of the build videos that we have to come. But first, we really wanted to dive into this water system and do an explanation video because otherwise it's just too information heavy for a build video. Plus we build faster when we're not filming so much, which has now become the goal, build faster. Now on to part three, our three options for obtaining water. So getting water and running water into the camper van. The first is the most obvious and pretty much the one that everybody uses which is filling up via an external hole, external tap, what's the word? Oh, it's pretty bad to not know that. Is it big enough? Ignore all the heating stuff. Let's just... We'll get to the heating stuff later. This is a pretty basic schematic of how the water is pulled from the freshwater tank. Through the inlet, it goes immediately to the freshwater tank. So from the freshwater tank, it goes through filtration, it's pulled by the pump, through the accumulator tank, and then it goes all the way up to whatever requires the water. Pro tip, if you travel with just a long tube, a long hose, you're able to put that here and then you can attach it to a tap because for a lot of times, Lottie and I will show up at locations and there's just like a big sink and then you have to fill up your biggest jug and then be pouring that or using a funnel in. So much easier if you can just get a hose on both ends, clip. But let's move on to the two other options, which were, are objectively more interesting. What makes our layout different is this little section right here, because you can see there's a little bit of a loop. Can you see it? Can you see it? Down we go. Wow. Wow. And we have this external water quick connect, and this can do two different things for two scenarios that we found ourselves in quite a lot. The first being when you roll up at a campsite and they have a hose next to your spot. So one of the features of this fan is that we're able to connect that hose to this quick connect spot and bypass the tank. These open and close, so that forces the water to go in a certain direction. With the campsite hose, for example, that already has a pressure. So the moment that we turn all the sink, the pressure from that hose is then released into our camper van. How would we change the handles here? Well, first we turn this one down we can completely pass that whole section and we have a beautiful path. Even for winter, we could have this quick connect clipped there. We don't have to be heating up the tank because the water is not sitting with us. One thing that we really wanted last time was we found this incredible creek and we wanted to be able to take some of the water and use that for our dishes and everything else. With this same feature, we'll have a hose that also has a filter on the end of it we'll be able to set it in the creek and use our water pump to suck water from the creek into the tank. So to do that, change this handle, but obviously the water needs somewhere to go, so we would also change this handle here. And now the water pump will suck directly from the quick connection hose and deliver that water directly to our freshwater tank. 
with this hose that we want to be putting in the creek it will have a filter on the top so we won't be sucking in larger debris or leaves or mud but then it will also pass through this smaller filter before it gets to the pump and before it kind of enters into our system as a whole so that should get rid of anything that's too large and that would damage our system would this water be okay to drink you know what no well not only would it go through the external filter and the end of the hose and the bigger fil filter that we have here but also it would go through the drinkable water filter but sadly we consulted a few different professionals and they all told us that it would be stupid to drink the water even with all these filters in place especially without a uv filter but for each stream or creek or lake that you were pulling from would contain a different algae or a different bacteria and that would need its own custom uv filter so the answer we officially got was no well <laughs> So to summarize how we're able to get water into this van is filling, sucking, bypassing. <laughs> Have any of you done this before? Because I've not even traveled in a van that had these features, but I know that I've heard it in some professional conversions. I've heard people using it. If you have the same feature, has it worked for you? Have you liked it? Talk to us about that experience because we are so, so excited to test this. Now I can show you what I've been hiding. Yeah, buddy. So hot in this heater PDF, I had to put my hair up. And now on to number four, which is kind of a fresh idea. Like the whole plan has only just been solidified in the last few days. And it was largely in part from one of the groups that were members on, on Facebook, a nomads group. Lottie was able to share a quick video of what we were dealing with and kind of our concept. And then so many members of the community were able to like throw in comments like that's complete bull you should be doing it this way. And we learned so, so much. And that is how we have the custom hot water tank that we do today. So it will be 15 liters and it can be heated up in three different ways. I wanna show you first off where it will be stored which is under our kitchen toe kick, which is, I think, a really clever place to keep it. Otherwise, this would have really been unused space, but it can just be stored right there. We obviously don't wanna be dealing with any leaks. We will have a pressure release, and instead of pushing a leak, it will just under the van a little bit. Just a quick little As water is heated, it expands. When six gallons of 70 degree water is heated to 130 degrees, the water will expand approximately six ounces. The water system in a recreation vehicle is a closed loop system and does not allow for thermal expansion of the heated water. When the pressure of the water system exceeds the relieving point of the T and P valve, the valve will open, relieving the excess pressure. What are the three ways that we can heat this water? The first, is with one of the heating elements like we did in the two tanks below the van. It's powered through our battery, and turns on the hot water, gets everything going and moving. This is where that heating element will be. Now we know that it will be a very useful thing to have, but we also don't imagine that we will be using it all that often. Maybe some mornings every now and then if we don't have options two or three on our plates. This water will be able to be heated up from the engine as we drive. The idea that we can use the heat from the engine to then warm up our water is way too cool. And this thermostatic valve that you see between the motor and the tank, this has a sensor to make sure that it's not allowing the engine to start cold or to not be properly heated within itself. So this is triggered when the motor has excess heat that can be shared with the water tank. All of the heat that that generates then will be pushed through all of these pipes and go throughout our water tank, therefore heating up the water that is around that piping within the tank. By the time it gets 
to the end of the pipe has cooled down quite a lot. And then that is pushed back to the motor and is used to cool down the engine. From some of the forms that we read through and some of the Facebook comments, some people who have done a similar system to this said that a, just a 20 minute ride to the grocery store has heated up all 10 liters of their hot water tank, which is absolutely incredible. The idea you can just go to the store and then you're guaranteed a hot shower. And then the third way that we're going to be able to heat up this water is from our diesel heater. Because our hot water tank is located under the kitchen and the tow kick, every time we have our diesel heater on, a branch will be blowing through the tow kick to warm up our feet while simultaneously warming up our hot water tank. For us, 15 liters between two people, that's a lot of hot water because simultaneously that's being mixed with cold water. I don't need a recirculating shower, baby. With this much hot water and this much water, I'm gonna be taking long hot showers all the time. We are so lucky to be living in 2022, everybody. I can't imagine trying to explain this to someone like my grandma or my great grandmother. They'd be like, what? Hot water in a vehicle? You're showering? Cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs. If you see any mistakes or if you have any experiences to share, please put them below in the comment section because it, it's not only us who reads them, it's hundreds of people read those comments and you can really help out the community. And hopefully by sharing our thought process and our reasoning, it can have a nice ripple effect on the community and hopefully some companies. Thank you all so much for watching and hopefully we'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.